First of all, I'd like to say that this video will only have any relevance if people start expressing an interest in doing a collaboration with me. If people don't want to collaborate, then there's not much point in going on. And this proof of concept, with maybe a few bug fixes, is where my journey with this software ends. I'll have other projects keep me busy if that happens, but it'll be a disappointment just the same. Long term, in order to make my vision for the game into a reality, I am going to need help. But here's the thing. I'm not ready for all the help that I know I'll need. Eventually, I'm going to need people to help me build levels, I'll need level designers, I'll need artists who can do a better job than me at drawing backgrounds, characters, items, enemies, etc. Depending on whether we go with taking existing brony tunes or asking someone to compose an original score, we might need composers. Honestly, there's stuff out there that is almost literally begging to be made background music, and existing brony tunes were actually my inspiration for starting this project in the first place. Another thing I might need is voice actors. I wasn't 100% sure I wanted voice acting with the dialogue in this game, but even if we don't have it in this game, the Meltdown engine was intended for other people to be able to make their own games off of it, and they should at least have the option of having voice acting in their games. Then again, if actors can act, then voiced dialogue is better than unvoiced dialogue, so maybe we would have voice actors after all. Especially if little kids end up playing this game, and they would if Hasbro decided to allow it. So, we might need voice acting, but only if I can find a sound system for Java that doesn't take up so much disk space, which leads me into another thing I'll need. Another programmer or two who I can divide work with would be very helpful, especially if they're more experienced than me at coding games in Java, especially in the area of sound. And once we have NPCs and a dialogue system, we'll probably need some writers who can help write the dialogue and quests. Of course, it's only as I add features to the game engine that these other creators can actually contribute. For instance, the game has no dialogue system at the moment, so how can a voice actor contribute before that's in place? And there's no inventory system, so how can I ask an artist to draw some neat items for me? Plus, Weather Factory Meltdown, as it is now, is a proof of concept, and all kinds of things like the size of the characters, how far or how high they can jump, and other aspects of the game that would affect level design are likely to change. Given that, it's too soon for me to ask level designers for help, too, except in terms of testing out the editor to see how user-friendly it is. At the moment, my plans for the next feature to add are to start by adding the ability for the editor to add and export custom playable characters. This entails more than you'd think. For instance, I know that eventually I want to add the ability to add custom abilities to the characters, and I might add that here, maybe, maybe not. Whether I add custom player character abilities for version 0.1.0 or not, adding custom playable characters will definitely require that I redo the bottom of the screen where it displays the pony's health. Since any game designer could include any characters in building their own content off of this game engine, I'd need to set up the bottom of the screen so that it can dynamically ask the question, hey, how many playable characters are there right now? And react to adding or removing playable characters. At the moment, the bottom of the screen is static. It always and only shows the main six. Of course, redoing the bottom of the screen has its positive aspect, since that frees up real estate for adding things like a dialogue system, an inventory system, or places to click to activate the magic system. Those are all features that are on the roadmap for the future. The first order of business once the feature of custom playable characters is added to the engine is to increase the size of the main characters. I got the idea to add gems to the game as collectible items and make enemies that are made of gems after I began this project, and I didn't draw the characters with those gems in mind. If I made the gems proportionate to the size of the main six as is, the gems would be so small they'd look worthless. I want them to look like they're worth getting or even impressive in the case of some of the larger gems. This will require some experimentation to get the right size, and once the characters are resized, then the whole level will need to be resized too, since the level was built with the small playable characters in mind. There are spaces that only small playable characters can get through, so the level will need to scale up to accommodate larger characters. I'm pretty sure that won't be too hard to code, but that scaling up will probably make everything look ugly and mean that, in the end, the whole factory will need to be redrawn. But then again, it probably should be redrawn anyway once multi-layered backgrounds are a feature, because with those, it'll look a lot better. Another thing that the artists are going to need to keep in mind while designing the main six is expandability. At some point, we're going to have to add things like outfits for the main six. 
In terms of game design, this will mean imposing images of the outfits on top of the characters, or in some cases the characters on top of the outfits. To make this work, the characters' animations will need to be standardized. The number of layers that get drawn will need to be standardized too, and the animations that the characters can go through will need to be decided beforehand as well, so that when the artists are designing the outfits later, they'll know how to animate the outfit graphics so that nothing is left out. That is going to take some discussion, and we'll probably end up changing our answer a few times along the way. And ideally, the animations we standardize would cover cutscenes, too. Yes, I'd like to have scripted cutscenes in the game. I'm not 100% sure how I'll have them worked out in the editor, but, well, I can cross that bridge when I come to it. Anyhow, the new playable character animations, the standardization, resizing the game, all that is the next step after 0.1.0 is released. Really, the game won't be ready for animations until then, though if artists who want to collaborate with me are feeling cheeky and want to try things out now, then I suppose they can make animations using the animated widget interface in the editor. And I can probably figure out some kind of way of importing the animation. But all that is version 0.1.0. What I really need from other bronies right now in version 0.0.3 is for people to start playing around with the editor so I know what else needs to be done to the editor to make it user-friendly and to play around with the game as well to find if there are bugs that I've missed. Now, it's worth adding that I may end up changing the order of operations. I might end up saying, for instance, that minigames need to come first so that other programmers can build their stuff and then I can integrate those minigames into the main game early on. That would give us a lot of time to find bugs, figure out what works and what doesn't, etc. What I have so far is a guideline. I wrote it out this way because it made sense to me at the time. Multilayered backgrounds are early because making that feature first will give artists a chance to build Ponyville in other towns and levels. The dialogue and quest system come after the custom NPCs system because the dialogue system before there's anyone to actually talk to doesn't quite make sense, and custom NPCs come after the inventory system because most enemies are supposed to be made of gems and the gems are items. Overall, my reasons for putting together the list the way I did are kind of complex. First of all, ideally I'd be able to keep the features coming to other bronies that I'd be collaborating with, so that they'd never walk up to their computers and say, I contributed something yesterday and I'd like to contribute something today, but there's nothing I can contribute because there's no features yet. I'd like to keep people interested. Secondly, ideally, I'd like to be able to pace myself in terms of difficult versus easy features to add. I'm expecting the multi-layered backgrounds to be easy, I could be wrong. I'm expecting custom NPCs to be difficult, again, I could be wrong. For all I know, they'll be easy for me to code, but hard for people working with me in the editor to build. I'd like to be able to give myself a rest with easy features after a hard one gets done, or do hard features later after I've had more time to learn or think about how to do them. Third, ideally, I'd like to be able to get things out there early that lay the foundations for later work. For instance, multi-layered backgrounds are early because I figure those are needed to give a Ponyville built in this game engine a sense of depth, and I figure it's best to have level designers building Ponyville early on so that when other stuff like NPCs and quests are added to the game engine, there's a place to put them. Of course, some of these things are at cross purposes. Artists can't help much when the dialogue and quest system comes out, so they might get bored. But then I'll probably need their help again when the scripted cutscene system happens. I figure that the orders that I put these features in in the roadmap was a decent compromise. That being said, I could find out I was wrong at any point along the way, and I'm more than willing to change this. The roadmap is really a tentative plan. I'm definitely going to need other people's help in figuring out what the best next choices are for what features to add, and I'm looking forward to working with you guys on this.